In this video, I am going to show you the best way to collect and think about inspiration and reference for your animation and design projects, which I think is one of the most valuable parts of the process. So let's begin. For Halloween, I wanted to create the most frightening animation ever. And what is the scariest thing to an animator? After Effects crashing. So that's my concept. I scribbled this really rough thumbnail sketch of the animation. So we're gonna have one shot of the error message saying After Effects has crashed, and then one shot of a horrified reaction. And I also want to replicate the look of a classic horror movie. And to do that, we need to collect some references and do some research first. And I'll be putting that together using this video sponsor, Millanote. Millanote is a web app that allows you to organize projects in a really visual way. For motion designers and animators, it can be used to create beautiful mood boards, scripts, storyboards, and more all in one place. So it's really easy to see the different elements of a project as you progress through your workflow. It's a lot like working on the wall of a creative studio, which is great, especially when a team is working remotely and you wanna have more collaborative interaction. Let's start with a new board. And first I'm gonna add a description of the elements that we want to feature in our project. So we want a scary reaction face, a horror poster style, and we want a lightning animation. So that's what we're gonna be looking for. Let's add our thumbnail sketch as well. We can do that just by dragging and dropping. And this is essentially our storyboard. Now the main feature of this animation is gonna be this horrified face here, the scary reaction face. So let's start with that and start finding some reference. As much as I want this face to be scary, I do also want it to look scared as well. And a scared face and a scary face do have a lot of similarities. If we look at Edvard Monk's The Scream, which is you know clearly based off of this emoji, we can look at it and think, oh, it's a dude obviously screaming, he's got his mouth open, end of story. But the full name of the painting is called The Scream of Nature. And I think that's mainly showing that the scream is coming from outside of this person. He's covering his ears to stop the noise and he's probably screaming in reaction as well. So a face can be scared and scary at the same time. So a little bit of art history there for you. So now I'm just gonna search scary face. So, <laughs> Be warned, if you're not into scary faces, there will be a lot of them in this section. And oh, we've got some scary faces. So I'm searching for reference and mainly dissecting and figuring out what is similar between all of these scary faces. What makes a face scary? And I'm gonna apply that to our design. And I'm certainly not just looking for one face to copy. I'm looking for the foundational qualities of what makes a face scary. The first thing that I noticed between pretty much all of these examples is that the eyes are all really wide open. I think almost every single one of these, the eyes are like really pulled back. The eyebrows are high and the eyes are almost popping out in a few of these examples. And also a lot of them have really dark shadows and recesses in the eyes. We've got a lot of dark shadows here. And in this Momo one, yeah, it looks like the eyes are just popping out of a recess. They don't even seem like it's a realistic sort of eye socket scenario going on here. And also we notice that in a whole bunch of these, there are no pupils. We've got the eyes all white or all black. And in a bunch of the others, we can see that the pupils are sort of weird colored. We've got really pale irises here. And in this mask, they're all inverted. And down here, we've got lots of sort of different colors and variations. So that's something to take note of. And I think when you're designing, eyes are one of the most important things to think about because eyes can convey so much emotion. And here you can see there is so much character in just the basic drawings of an eye, where you position the eyebrows, where you position the pupils and how up and down the lids are. And I think that's definitely an evolutionary trait that we spend so much of our time looking at other people's faces. And so it's in our instincts to pick up on subtle changes in a person's eyes, depending on their mood and what they're up to. So let's save some examples to put in our board in Millanote. So I'm gonna click on this Momo one because that looks very horrifying. And I've installed the Millanote Clipper extension. So on the top of every image, I just have a little save icon. So I can click on that and it'll pop up here and say, save to Halloween reference. So we'll save that one. And let's scroll down and find some more. I kind of like the eyes and traits in this one too. And one other face I think I should reference is this monkey toy that was in Toy Story 3. Here we are, it's this one. Now this is horrifying. So I do want to save some references of this. But there's something about this, even though it's a children's toy, the expression of the eyes and just the way the teeth are gritted is really terrifying. Now let's pop into our mood board and we can see now that it's got all of these images that we've saved. So we can just drag them onto our board. And I think this monkey one is gonna be our main reference. So I'm gonna make these others quite a bit smaller. Now let's go and look for some references for horror posters. So I'm gonna search horror posters in Google Images and we get a lot of modern ones here. So it's giving us the option for vintage horror posters. So let's take a look at those. And here's what we're after. I really love the styles of these really old school ones, the ones that were painted. 
This one's great. I love the really dramatic lighting with the light source coming up at this character here. I'm going to save that one. And this one's also really good, especially I'm looking for this lighting as well so I can replicate some of that on our character too. And I do like that Google has this sort of related images down here so we can see different variations of posters. And Pinterest also has this feature as well, which is a, maybe a little more advanced than the Google images one. So I'm going to take a look at Pinterest as well. And I'm going to look up horror poster and find a few more that I like. I do like this Chucky one and I'm just going to use the Milanet Clipper as well to save that. And I'm also going to try to search instead of horror poster, horror cover. And I'm choosing the words cover because that way I'm going to get VHS covers and also book covers, which I think will be a good reference as well. I do like this. This slime one is great. I like the composition here. Where we've got one object on like a black background. I think that's going to be similar to how we'll approach our lighting. And I'm not just looking for scary faces as well. So I like this crab one because I like the composition, the positioning and the lighting as well. That seems really dramatic and I think that might be useful. So I'm going to save that. And you also find some I don't, just amusing things. I really like these dogs with snakes for mouths. I don't know if that's going to be useful for our project, but I think that's amusing. And I will definitely be remembering that for another project down the line. And this poster, this one I love. This one for a movie called Dogs. But the expression in the dog is so fierce. And you can see it's got all the traits that we had in our previous eye. It's got a different sort of red color on the iris and it's like wide open. So let's save this one. I think we'll be using this a lot too. I think we've got enough references for posters. So let's go into Milanote and drag those onto our board as well. So let's sort these out. I'm going to shrink down the ones that probably aren't as important to our design. I do really like this dog one. So that one's going to feature pretty prominently. And this brighter Frankenstein poster, I really like this lighting coming from underneath. So I want to make a little note to match the lighting in this one. Same with this Chucky one. I do like the light coming in really harsh from one side. The others I'll just pop up here. And now let's get some reference for the actual lightning animation, because that is something that we will need to replicate quite closely. So I'm going to search for lightning strike. I'm just going into YouTube first, because that'll probably have the most options. Here we are, ten, top 10 best lightning strikes. Let's see what's in here. Lightning can manifest itself in many dramatic and beautiful ways, from spectacular... Okay, we've got a lot of options here, but they all go really fast. So I'm going to see if they have any slow motion ones, because I think that's going to be more relevant to us. Here we go, watch the birth of a lightning strike in slow motion. Okay, this is really good. This is in really slow motion, so we can see how the lightning develops and how bright it gets when there is a strike. So this is going to be really useful. So I'm just going to copy this URL, and then in Millanote, we can add a link by just entering our URL here, pressing enter. And now I've got a copy of that video that we can watch straight in our board. But I do want to find another lightning, maybe one that's in real time, not in slow motion. And I'm going to check Vimeo for that because Vimeo might have a different quality of lightning than on YouTube. Maybe we get some more artsy videos on Vimeo. So I'm just going to scroll through and see if I can find some nice color references on the thumbnail as well. I'm noticing here we get a lot of blue and purple in the sky when there's a lightning strike or maybe this sort of red color. So that's interesting to note, maybe we're gonna feature purple a lot in the animation. Now here, this video, this one looks really promising. I really like the, even before we get to the lightning strike, just based on this thumbnail that we've got, it's really dramatic. I like just sort of looking up into the sky where the building looks massive. Let's see what this one's like. I think that is a perfect lightning strike. We get a bunch of different sort of forks of the lightning. And now the one thing about Vimeo that I do love compared to YouTube is that you can scroll through frame by frame. So if you just hold shift on your keyboard and then move the arrow keys to the left and right, it will jump one frame you know, forwards or backwards in the video. Now this is really useful when looking at an animation so you can sort of break down exactly how a, maybe a transition was done, but especially for lightning when it goes so fast we can see that oh, the lightning starts with a big flash and then that slowly sort of decreases around our lightning bolt and then that just sort of fades away and then another one starts somewhere. So this is going to be really useful. So let's save this URL to our Miller note as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with a lot of the reference we've got here now. There is one thing that I do want to add, which is a color palette. So to help me make that, which I'm going to do in Illustrator, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this board and then just select everything that's inside it. And then in a new document in Illustrator, I'm just going to paste that in and scale that down so I can just see what's going on in here. And how I like to make color palettes is to just draw a few squares. I think we're going to go for about five colors in this palette. Now, the first color, I think we want to be a black. Oh, this really strong red here. 
And because our character is going to have sort of gum showing like this dog, I think red in maybe the eyes and the mouth is going to be a good color as well. So I'm just going to eye drop a red here. We're going to want a flesh color for our character. And I think let's go for a sort of neutral flesh here. Like we've got our monkey and let's go for a darker shadow as well. So I'm going to select someone that's a bit darker and I'm going to adjust these as well. So I'm not being too precious here. And then the secondary color, I think we've got to choose a purple for our lightning there. Now, I think all of these colors together don't really work as they are. So what I'm going to do is just go over to the top right, choose HSB because I just prefer to work in HSB and adjust some of these colors until they feel like they work together harmoniously. Okay, these are looking a lot more harmonious now. So what I'm gonna to do to add them to our Milanote board is I'm just gonna double click on the color in the palette here and I'm gonna copy the hex code. And the great thing about Milanote is if you just drop in a note and copy in the hex code and press enter, it gives you a color swatch. So I'm gonna do that for all our colors. There, I think we've got everything in our mood board now. I think I do want to draw a bit more attention to these eyes. So I'm just gonna add a note that says the eyes and draw a little arrow to that so that anyone else that views this mood board knows that the eyes are something to focus on. So now we've got all of our reference together and we're going to approach our design and animation with this right next to us. And I think it's important while collecting reference that you're not just looking for things that look cool to copy in your animation. You're also breaking down what it is exactly about the image that makes it effective. So we know we've got the lighting here that we really like. We've got the way the eyes and sort of mouth are formed in this image that we want to replicate. We have a better idea of how lightning works. And we've got a decent color palette as well. So we've got everything we need so we can get straight into the design and not have to be searching everywhere all over the internet when we want to figure out any of these things. In the next video, I'll be breaking down how I designed the frames for this project and breaking down how I animated it as well. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. And of course, thank you again to Milanote for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.